All right, go for it, uh, Ron. Are we going straight to questions? Yeah, fire away, Ron. Coach, how you doing today? I'm doing awesome. It was good to get back on the field and uh, start working on some things and have a good little light practice. Guys had great energy, unbelievable care factor, excited to do work on things we need to do. So I'll do a good start this morning and uh, look forward to continuing to work on the game plan the rest of the day. So the uh, the plan going into this weekend's game is to have an up-to-capacity stadium. Can you remember when the last time you saw Albertson Stadium full? Who? No, I can't specifically recall, Ron. In the last game that I I was involved in in this in this stadium, it was snowing, and so it was definitely not f- full that night. Um, but uh, shoot, I'm trying to think back. Probably a um, um, BYU game that year, if 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 it was that one, if I recall. And that would have been. I know we're, we're close. Were- I know we're close for this week, huh? We're yeah. right there, right at the mark. So we got to push. You know, bringing that up and, and being able to to say we hadn't been able to do this in a long time. And here we are, you know, on the first week of, of the first home game and to be at a position where we very well could sell this out with just a few thousand left. That's awesome. And to be clear, that, that last game where you saw it full, that was when you were a coach here at Boise State or when you were. Yeah, a when I was a coach. Yeah. And so when the, the last time you guys played UTEP, you were a player at Boise State. Uh, what can you remember about those games and, the, and those, that their their offense specifically? Shoot, I know we played them uh, one year. The last year we played them was uh, right after Halloween, and we traveled down there. It was the last time I played them, um, and, and it was a physical game, extremely physical game. Um, there was some back and forth, and there were a few special teams plays that had a big, uh, big part in the game. Um, but you know, we've had, you know, back in the old whack days, right? That's what we're talking about. We, we had some unbelievable matches. They had some really good players as, um, as we start to look at the film and, you know, over the last couple of days and look at what, what they look like this year, they have some explosive players on both sides of the ball. And so it's, uh, it's going to be a physical game, especially up front with the way they run the ball and where the way they work to stop the run. Thanks coach. Good luck this week. Thank you. Hey Andy, how we doing? <clears throat> good, what's going on, Jay? Um, good to be back. Uh, uh, you know, Andy, home opener coming up, fans in the stands. Probably almost half your roster has never really got to even experience what game day is like at Albertson Stadium. As somebody that has experience it both as a player and coach, what is the best thing at game, on game day at Albertson Stadium? I mean, the atmosphere is just it's it's unique. It's unique. The support from Bronco Nation is uh, is unbelievable. And that's one of the biggest things that, um, you know, when you're a part of this that and, and being a part of it for so many years, um, people appreciate from from a player side and just having the support from the from the community, from the university, from the fans. Um, and and it's not the biggest stadium, but it is one of the loudest venues that you know, that even I've ever played in or coached in, including SEC stadiums and NFL stadiums. And it's it's unique that way. And we uh, we're looking forward to bringing some of that some of that chaos, you know, and getting some of that chaos in this stadium, uh, you know, this Friday night. It's exciting from the standpoint of everything that, um, er, you know, we went through last year, whether it was here or wherever else in terms of not being able to have fans and, and be able to get people back in there and and create that game day atmosphere. You know, that was that was awesome uh last week being able to go down and play in front of fans and, and the players they they loved it they loved it they loved the challenge of the crowd noise and going into a hostile place like that um it was an unbelievable obviously learning experience for us but um one that we needed now that you've had some time to go back and look at and analyze the, the game against UCF what's something that you were really happy about and what's something that you guys feel like you need to take a step in before you hit the field again on Friday night? Well, one thing that we're all really happy about is the way we stayed in the fight. You know, even through the tough times of the game, we saw ourselves. One of the best parts about that game, and, um, you know, it's tough with, with the outcome, but at the end of the day, you find the positives, and we are able to see what we look like when we are at our best in that game and analyze that. Why? What are the things within, even when we, we are at our best, what are the things that we can improve on? You know, when we had our lulls in the game, what, what were the reasons? Um, were they operationally? What can we do? What do we need to do starting with us as coaches that we can control? 
Um, you know, one of the things that I look at that, that I'm excited about improving going forward is just making sure that for, for, for me and my role, I keep us on schedule throughout the whole game. And we were more uh, deliberate and efficient with our communication and keeping us on schedule. And that's an exciting thing. That's an exciting role. I look forward to that challenge and, and, not, and working on it throughout the course of the week and implementing things in practice that are going to make us respond, that are going to challenge all the coaches, including myself, as well as the players. And I think uh, what we all learn um, at the end of it, most importantly, is that locker room cares. They care. The care factor and them knowing what it felt like um, to get rolling and then knowing what it felt like when we weren't in the care factor to learn to do, to be more consistent and do the things that we were doing and that we need to do, you know, in the preparation leading up to the game to be consistent. Those are the things that, um, you know, in, in a bigger picture sense, Jay, um, but from the things that the small things that become big things, it always, this game starts at the line of scrimmage, fundamentally and technically how we play at the line of scrimmage. Uh, we are out there today. We already made strides at creating habits, establishing and defining um, certain fundamentals and how we're going to coach it um, and being unified with that and, and making sure that uh, the players have clear communication and a, and a clear idea of, of how we're going to play certain things. And now we're going to go rep and create those habits. And it was an awesome practice. Thanks, Andy. All right, let's go BJ, Bob, and then Will. Hey, Andy. What's up, man? Uh, the rush defense, when you went back and looked at the film, um, you know, I know 255 yards obviously isn't your standard and UTEP's come in with three guys averaging six plus yards a carry too. I mean, what, what'd you see when you look at the, the running defense? Yeah, for us, I mean, like we just spoke about, it starts with our fundamentals. Um, it starts with how we establish the line of scrimmage, you know, how we play number one with our eyes, our eyes are extremely important. The discipline we have with our eyes and, and what we're targeting, what we're seeing from our keys. And then. Um, with that, with our eyes, how how we're striking with our hands and creating leverage, um, and and we got to have our feet in the ground. And so it's it's the basic fundamentals that we got to go back to and sharpen up. Um, and with doing so and being able to establish the line of scrimmage, and not just interiorly, not just on the edge, the linebacker position, and then um, you know the secondary gets pulled in into the line of scrimmage as well. And so it's a it's a whole effort, and we're excited about improving that. We know we got plenty of room for growth there, um, from the standpoint of our run fits. Um, our fits were sharp. Our fits were sharp. We did miss some tackles um, and some holes and, and on the perimeter and on the edge, some things uh, leverage wise, BJ, that we can clean up in terms of tracking and making sure, again, this game comes down to the discipline with our eyes and tracking hips and not staring up high and, and falling for those head fakes and all that stuff. But really being able to um, use our leverage and know where our help is in certain situations on the perimeter and in the alleys when we're tackling. What did you think of how your offensive line played in that game? And obviously, I know running the ball was was a struggle uh, again, but I don't think Hank took any sacks. Um, what did you think of, of O-line? And, and I guess same thing with the line of scrimmage, trying to trying to obviously improve uh, your running game as well. So we got the ball moving in the first half. We had actually some good uh, – um, we got some movement up front, covered some guys up. I'm going to be uh, honest with you. When, when Stetsy went down, um, it was a little bit difficult to handle – um, the personnel they had inside. And that's, that's football. We got to be able to respond. We got to have answers and we got to be able to adjust and, and create. In the course of, of a football game, it's all about getting ahead of the chains on first down and, and stopping teams from getting ahead of the chains on first down. Um, that's where, you know, for us as coaches, we can improve starting with myself and making sure we stay on schedule within the game plan to uh, move on to the next thing, to keep ourselves moving the sticks on first down. Um, we talk about run yards, and I can't go into specifics about what that looks like because I'd be giving away game plans. But there's different ways to get run yards, and it's not always handing the ball off if you get what I'm saying. And so we've just got to do a better job of identifying um, what the defense has given us and take those things and get the sticks moving, and then we can uh, you know, establish the run game as we get moving. Uh, we're going to see really good personnel you know, on defensive fronts. We saw it the other night. Um, at times, we obviously did not handle it well. Um, we had some pre-snap uh, um, uh, quarterback center exchange issues, and, and, and that can't happen. That can't happen. That puts us – that's worse than a pre-snap penalty on first and 10 because at least at that point we're talking about first and 15. And the situation is ending the first half. 
uh, those plays never even got the play never even got started in our last drive because we went, you know, we, we had a pre uh, uh, operational issue with the exchange, which we can clean up that we can totally clean that up. We can be much more efficient. We're not second in 14, 15. Um, they're backed up coming out of the halftime. Same deal. We can fix those things. Our players are tremendous and they care about it. And we will get that stuff squared away. Thank you. You know, and part of the sack deal that you brought up too, BJ, um, is attributed to the offensive line doing an unbelievable job. Ben Dooley, you know, with the matchups on their edge players. But not only that, but Hank's improvement in his ability to get the ball out of his hands and stay within a progression and have that clock in his head and, and know who's rushing and know what the challenges are. And, and so at times we did a really, really good job with that. We, we operated efficiently. And, um, you know, there's some matchup some serious matchups that, that our guys won within protections, but that again, because Hank's ability to stay on time, you know, was really good for the majority of the game. Andy, for a, for a new fan coming to a Boise State home game, for a fan like attending um, this Friday's game, as a player and coach that's experienced that atmosphere, how would you describe it to a new fan? Well, I would say this, you know, um, is in with any stadium there, there are different chants. Um, I would, I would also say that it is, it is going to be, there are going to be some new elements to this, to this atmosphere at Boise state. Um, Jeremiah and his staff and, um, the plan that we've created to eliminate some of the advertisement throughout the game and, and get it, you know, fill some of the dead time within the game with entertainment and to keep, um, you know, the stadium going and not have too many lulls within the stadium. I'm excited to see that too and see what that looks like. Um, now, obviously, uh, we are the, the center and focal point of why everybody's there. So it is our responsibility to be able to, uh, you know, play football with that, it, that incorporates a certain mentality that incorporates, you know, how we finish and how we work together. Um, and that's going to create excitement within the stands and within the atmosphere. What did you think of Khalil's performance, having been able to review the film? Yeah, you didn't have to watch the film to, to see that. You know, and, and, and he obviously, he was on a play count. Otherwise, he would have been there a lot more. Uh, we love our guys, not only Shaq, but everybody else. And we are always going to take their best interests into account. And given a situation uh, he was working through, um, you know, he really practiced a couple times uh, in a week's time leading up to that. And so... Uh, he was on a play count, and he made the most of those plays that he was in on. Um, extraordinary, excited that he's feeling great. And, um, you know, he's back to 100%. And we're really excited, not only about him, but they're, you know, I think, shoot, there in the first quarter, Hank got the ball to eight different guys. And that's exciting. That's a feature of the offense. Um, now, it's obviously important, too, that we make sure that we get certain guys in certain situations. Thanks, Andy. Coach, uh, are you there, Coach? Yep. Oh, you can hear me. Great. I uh, just wanted to check with you on how you get ready for UTEP. They played a game last night live. They've now played two games. Do you watch them live? Do you just look at it recorded after it's done? How do you get ready for UTEP, and what did you see in them? Both. To answer your question, I watched the game live last night. I wanted to see the operation. From a, from a big picture standpoint. I wanted to see how they move on and off the field. I want to see how they substitute. I want to see how they operate. You know, you uh, we, we often get TV copies, not just the, uh, the footage filmed by the, by the program um, from the end zone and from the sideline. And that helps get a better understanding of the operation, um, helps get a better understanding of what they look like in the pre-snap so that we can uh, um, put a game plan together and create advantages for ourselves in, um, a lot of different scenarios. So we watched the game last night on the ESPN app. And then uh, as soon as we got it, we broke it down and identified to see the similarities on in all three phases from the previous game that they played. Give me a Cliff Notes version of, you know, what can I expect to see? What did they, you know, what did they run? What do they look like? What do you think? What do you think they do best? Well, offensively, you know, it's already been said on here. They got they got three running backs that are over six yards a pop, you know, and other guys that are there near in the, the five yard average mark. 
So that tells you what they're doing on offense. Their O-line is big, and you turn on the film, and they run all the schemes. And so this is going to be an unbelievable opportunity for us this week to sharpen our tools and get ready because we got another run game coming at us. Um, and how disciplined we are with our eyes and our fits. They, they can run all the schemes. The O-line is athletic. They run inside zone. They run outside zone. Um, they got the feet to do so. They got the feet to pull out on the perimeter. They run power. Um, so they're going to run all the schemes. And we need the work. We need to um, have an unbelievable week in terms of our prep. Um, because you guys know what's going to come off that run game too. You know, as soon as you start sucking up into the run game and all that, the play actions, the boots, and those things come off of the run, the run looks. Um, they have the ability to spread it out a little bit and attack vertically. They got some wide receivers that can stretch the field and uh, run vertical. And, and um, you know, although they've only had about 40 attempts, you know, on, on the year, they've been accurate and been able to create some explosive plays. And defensively, um, you know, they're going to play a mixture of, of cover ones and playing some man um, and then playing some cover four as well. And uh, um, they've got some personnel up front uh, in terms of their D tackles. They got some big guys that got some twitch and we're going to see, you know, how we improve this week and, and from our first opportunity and what we learn. And, and that's the, that's the challenge of, of uh, you know, the season. And that's a great thing of the season is to see where you're at in the first game and where you can grow from there. Thanks, Coach. Well, Jay, do you have a question? Yes, uh, Coach. Uh, I was going to ask you a little bit about what they did defensively. You've already done that. I thought one of the good things, your punter, uh, two 60-yard punts, one right before the end of the first half and one which kind of flipped the field later on in the ball game. Uh, I, I thought he was magnificent, averaging 51 yards a punt. Paul, Jay, that is, whew, that was big time. You talk about flipping the field. You know, there was one instance there where, you know, we were, we were uh, probably punting from about the 15-yard line and, uh, you know, just before the half. And, and uh, they put the punt returner right on the 50-yard line. And I'm looking, I'm like, my eyes are messed up or there ain't no way because – you know, this is Joel's going to come up big right now, and he he's going to get a hold of this thing and flip the field. That's what we need him to do. And he came through and he booted that thing now, and that was that was big time by him. And he had heat coming in his face on the one that we're talking about too. Um, it was it was a there was heavy heavy pressure by their uh, pump block team, and it didn't phase him. Uh, he did a tremendous job in that game. Um, you know, keeping the defense you know off the logo, you know, or in the plus starting in the plus territory. How would you categorize UTEP's quarterback? Uh, he, he doesn't throw the ball too much. They run the ball most of the time. But how would you categorize him? What kind of a quarterback are we going to see? Yeah, so um, they've actually used two. Um, they got a pocket guy that, you know, he has got the majority of the attempts. Um, again, he, uh, he has the ability to, to run around a little bit, but he's going to stay in the pocket. He's going to work the play action game. Uh, he's got a strong arm. Um, he can throw the ball down the field. There's plenty of examples of, of that on film. Um, they also have a quarterback they put in there that they like to run the ball with um, and is more of a running quarterback. So being able to identify that personnel and knowing what they like to do with both of those guys uh, within their game plan um, is going to be important for our guys. Thanks, Coach. Hey, Andy, I was just uh, wondering, um, as we get uh, – we got a big game coming up uh, two weeks from now. You guys got a big game in Oklahoma State. How do you keep your guys focused on this upcoming week's game? We got so many things that we've learned from from our last game that we ain't got time to think about anything but showing up here every morning, and that's our challenge. Um, that's our challenge right now is every single morning, how we show up here. What what our care factor looks like, and, and wanting to impact ourselves and, and impact our team. And that's all we're focused on right now. Um, I think there's plenty of examples um, of, of what college football looks like from this weekend. And that's the first thing we ask them. And a lot of them watch college football yesterday and know what happened through the course of, um, you know, different games. And ultimately, um, 
what we got to even become more consistent with is being able to focus on what we could control each and every day. And as we do that, we, we will build consistency within the habits that it's going to take to become the team that we can. Thank you. Jay, do you want to go with your follow-up and then BJ? Yeah. Um, Andy, when you go back and you look at some of the big plays that you guys made against UCF, whether it be the touchdown return, either of Khalil's touchdowns, the first one specifically, CT had an incredible effort picking up two blocks. Um, what does that say about the selflessness of some of the guys on your team and what they think about their teammates? That's the part that is like, Jay, if you, you, you were underneath those stands before when everything was going on, you saw how everybody was calm. Everybody was trying to take care of each other. That's, that's what it's all about. That's what we're building into this program. That's the most important thing is that when we can align our self-interest with the greater good and we can understand that how we impact other people is going to help how we grow, how we help have more of a servant mindset in terms of taking care of each other, that shows on the field. And, um, you know, not only for Sha Shaq on, you know, Shaq and it was a CT and who was it, Kurt? over there block and it was like a combo block. You yeah, it, was, it, was, it was actually Cyrus. Or on Cyrus on that yeah. one, there was another one for on the uh, RPO out of the bunch, Yeah, right? Where it was Kurt and another wide receiver, it might've been uh, Steph. And that's a combo block that a typical tight end, maybe a tackle or a tackle and a guard execute. And those guys move the perimeter. That's what we're talking about. Those are run yards. There's different ways and as a team, we can do those things. We can find ways to, to create our yardage on first, second downs. Um, and that's what our staff is excited to, to improve upon for ourselves because our players have shown we have the ability to do it. We have the ability to do it in different facets, and we will do a better job because they, they will execute and get that stuff done. Um, but that was awesome to see. It was awesome to see the effort that um, Tyreek needed to get to the end zone on that interception, how many blocks he got. Um, that's, that's what it's all about. And we got to continue to play team football. And it shows, you know, our SWAT, our, our special teams, um, the way we covered the field, the effort on that stuff, the physicality we played with. That's the window of, that shows you what our, the mentality of our team is because it's when everybody comes together from offense, defense, and then what do we look like when we're working together? And there's definitely areas we can improve on, you know, within that as well. But the mentality of which the guys played with, we can, we can definitely – we're excited about that and we can grow off of that. Thanks, Andy. Hey, Andy, with the uh, targeting call on Kekala, I know uh, in the past they had that rule where you had to like leave the field, you know, go to the locker room, and I, you know he got to stay. So for the first half when he's out, can he at least be on the sidelines now? I know in the past he had to be. What do you do defensively right. for that first half with him out? Right. So you know it's a new rule. They can stay on the sideline. They make it very clear he doesn't have to go in. You don't have to sit in there, but you know obviously they cannot play. And so yes, um, you know what. It's it's a bang bang play. It's a it's a you know it's a specialty route. It's a it's a difficult route to to manage and handle. And he saw it at the last second, and he kicked one eighty, flipped his hips, ran back, and um, tried to break it break it up. We can be how we handle that situation next time. We always whether we're blocking on offense, we're tackling. We got to stay within the strike zone, you know, in the strike zones from the numbers uh, numbers down, and so. Um, we got to make sure that we're doing a good job with that. He's competing again, and it's a bang-bang play. We will uh, take the opportunity to, to develop and build depth, obviously making sure that we have a plan. Um, you know, Rodney, is, uh, Rodney has been the backup there through the course of uh, the spring and fall camp, and um, he's been – Rodney's been unbelievable on special teams. He provides a spark, that the, mo the momentum and the uh, effort he gives flying down the field on kickoff, what he does, you know, on our punt team. And – um, all the teams he plays on, he does a really, really good job. So, you know, he's going to, you know, he's going to have to do a really good job preparing. We're going to do a really good job getting him ready this week to step up and handle it in that first half. Thanks. Coach, uh, we saw Scott Matlock on the offensive side of the ball in a big fourth and one. Uh, what about him made you comfortable putting him in that position and how did he perform as a blocker? Um, well, we, uh, 
we've we've used that in uh, fall camp a couple different times in goal line situations, and um, that was a pivotal point in the game. And so, um, you know, we we hadn't used it in the game; they had not seen it, so we had not actually used it out in the field in practice. It's only been a goal line situation. Uh, we felt we needed that yard, and, and Scott, when he's been in there. When he's been in there in practice, it looks a little bit different when him and OJ get together and combo on somebody. And they did a, they did a really good job. Now the 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 defense, you know, adjusted and moved to more of a sneak defense. They expected uh, for us to sneak the ball there, and because um, Hank was underneath center, and so uh, that that we were able to create a wall. And Andrew Van Buren, he knows the two guys he needs to get behind on that play, and he did a great job of doing that and, and getting through there. Thanks, coach. Thank you, coach. We appreciate it. Thank you, guys. Have a great day.